Everybody's talking about it. Everybody saw it. NVDA absolutely smashed their quarter four earnings. I'll go over that. I'm going to go over the swing trade that I talked about in yesterday's video in the beginning of the video, ticker ACHL. I said I added it. It's up 13% today. This is a artificial intelligence powered biotech stock with multiple upcoming catalysts and an upcoming conference. I do believe it has more room to run higher. I'm not saying straight up, but I do believe this can slowly continue to move higher. In my opinion, remember, I'm not a financial advisor. Following any of my trade ideas can result in a loss. You have to do your own research at the end of the day. I'm also going to go over my seven or $6,900 profit on the day on my trading account. Remember, I have a trading account and I have a swing trading account. I keep these two separate. This is just what I do to keep it a little bit more organized. And in my private Discord, you can see that I was able to alert my biggest gainer of the day when that news dropped, ticker BZFD. If you do want some alerts, there's a link in the top pin comment to hop in the private Discord. Now, let's go ahead and actually start out with NVDA really quick. Talk about that. They're up 9% after hours. They smashed earnings. They beat expectations. They beat guidance. They had an adjusted $5.16 per share on $22 billion revenue when it was expected to be $20.5 billion, 20 billion revenue. So they beat their revenue by a significant amount. And their total revenue for the period rose 265%. Generative AI demand has no bounds right now. It's absolutely in massive demand. Generative AI is a new application. It's enabling a new way to create software. It's a new way of computing. It's, a, it's enabling a whole new industry. This is driving growth. A collective of a multi-billion dollar industries are embracing NVIDIA's generative AI. We estimate approximately 40% of data center revenue from the past year was from AI. Almost 80 vehicle manufacturers are using NVIDIA's AI structure for autonomous driving and other applications. They expect that to grow. Pharmaceutical companies are embracing NVIDIA's generative AI for computer-aided drug discovery. Growth was strong all over besides China, so growth wasn't so good in China, and that was the only weakness out of their entire earnings report, everything was absolutely knocked out of the park. And like I said, generative AI, it's absolutely in demand. I've been talking about the chat ETF, ticker chat, a generative AI and technology ETF. I was, I've been buying this one. I've been holding this one. I'm going to hold this one long term. This is one of my main long term holds. And it's an ETF with NVIDIA as the number one holding. But you also have Microsoft, Meta, Google, Adobe, some, you know, Chinese artificial intelligence stocks that are lagging behind right now that may eventually come up. CRM, Salesforce, Amazon, you know, SMCI. This is an actively managed ETF. I'm not sponsored by them. I just hold them long term. I really like chat as a long term hold. If you're into AI technology, generative AI, this is actively managed. So if a, if a new player in the game pops up, you can they'll, they'll add that to their portfolio they'll change their holdings and it's just an it's a great one in my personal opinion now jim kramer was able to you know have one for himself here you know he he said if you bet against nvidia please don't forget to send me an invitation to your funeral a lot of people joke jim kramer's always wrong blah 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 you can see this guy i'm putting every penny i have into an nvidia short right now after he said that well in this case Jim got one right. I just found that kind of funny. He was able to get one correct in this scenario here. And because he was talking about yesterday or the other day that, you know, Nvidia hasn't even peaked. It still has room to run. A lot of people thought they were going to inverse Kramer and it was going to tank, but this case he got one. So give it to Jim for this one here. Now, I did want to quickly mention C3AI really quick. So C3AI is a stock that gets hype when artificial intelligence stocks, you know, start to gain hype. And NVIDIA is the main one to create artificial intelligence hype. So there is a decent chance we could see, you know, more artificial intelligence stocks gain some hype. And C3AI, ticker AI, is really one that does that a lot. And they do have a catalyst coming up. So C3AI will be hosting a generative AI conference from March 5th 
to March 7th, 2024. So keep a close eye on C3 AI there. Now, looking at the chart here, what we overall really want to see is this downtrend here to break out, which is basically going to be over $30 here. So if you do see C3 AI strongly break over $30, and that's leading up to that meeting on March 5th to the 7th, you may want to look at this for some options trading opportunities and or just from, you know, some common trading opportunities. I believe it could be an opportunity there for C3 AI. So keep an eye on that $30 breakout leading up to that catalyst in March. Also, Soundhound. Soundhound put out a PR today that, you know, the global, this is global first as Soundhound AI's voice assistance with integrated chat GBT goes into full project production with Stellantis DS automotive automobiles geez I can't talk right now in car usage as it sees huge growth and they're talking about chat GPT here so some really good news for SOUN drop drop a comment down below if you've been holding SOUN ever since I've been talking about it because I know a lot of you guys are bullish on me or bullish on SOUN just like I am bullish on it as well now let's talk about the swing trade opportunities really quick and then we'll get into the day trades that I took. So the swing trade opportunities here take our ACHL. I'm still holding my 12,500 shares here. I didn't take profits today on the 13% move because I do believe we have a pretty good chance to move higher here. Right now we're sitting at a $50 million market cap, a 29 million float. We have 114 million cash on hand for ticker ACHL. And we have, it's also AI powered, by the way, not saying that that's going to mean a whole lot here, but, and that, that doesn't change anything. I didn't even notice that it was AI powered when I got into this play, but it's definitely going to help with this AI height. Also, they have a meeting on February 29th, 2024, where I'm not sure if they're going to present any data at the meeting, but they do have phase one, two, a data to be presented in quarter one of 2024 and and even more phase one two data to, to be presented in quarter one of 2024 which ends march 31st and if we take a look at the chart here for ticker achl we're looking like we're on a strong uptrend here so like i said yesterday we were we're already over the 50 day ma and the 200 day ma which are big moving averages that if you see it cross over those that could be a sign of a new uptrend. So that is big for this one. We have resistance at $1.30. If we break over $1.30, we have a lot of room to get to around $1.60 to $1.75, in my opinion, leading up to that conference, leading up to the catalyst. I think we can continue to run up on the high volume that we're getting right now, leading up to that February 29th, 2024 meeting. Now, Am I 100% sure if this company is going to report positive data when they report that phase 1A, when they you know, report these two pieces of data? I cannot be 100% sure in this situation. But what I do believe could happen is a run-up leading up to this conference, leading up to the data. And if they do report good data, then you know it could obviously pop. I might, depending on what the price action does going forward, I'll try to keep you guys updated depending on what the price action does i may decide to take some profit leading up to this date if we get you know a nice move so you know guys at the end of the day that's just what i'm doing you guys do whatever you gotta do with your money profits whatever this is just what i'm doing this is what i'm seeing of course ptpi still big position in ptpi what we have here 15 million cash 25 months of cash 3.6 million market cap, 1 million float. I know this one is taking a little bit longer to play out. That's completely fine with me. It was a green day for this one today. They have a scheduled type C meeting on March 26. So still, still over a month left until that catalyst is coming up. And then a listen only meeting on March 11th for PTPI. And, and of course, you know, they entered into an AI licensing agreement with a multi-billion dollar software provider where they're going to update on the details about that partnership in the coming weeks and months. So I love PTPI, still holding that one. And then BDRX, of course, still in this one, 8,900 8, shares on BDRX. And we have 
preclinical data due in quarter one and phase one results to be presented at a medical conference in quarter one. So I'm just waiting for the data for BDRX. I'm still in. Remember, these are still not long term holds. If bad news comes out for PTPI, if bad news comes out for BDRX and they drop under a dollar, then I'll get out a CHL. Um, you know, same thing with this one. If this one drops under a dollar, I'll get out. I'll take the loss. Although, you know, we're already in the green, so we shouldn't really have to suffer, you know, a stop loss on this one. Uh, you, you know, it's looking good overall for ACHL, PTPI, BDRX. We're just, I'm just waiting for the catalyst. That's really all I'm doing for this one. Uh, BBAI here, this one had a nice 8% pop. I'm still in this one. A stop loss, $1.78. They do have that merger in quarter one. You know, this the $70 million acquisition here in quarter one for Pangium. $70 million merger. So hopefully we get some sort of PR about that one. I'm still going to be in this one, especially with potential AI hype coming up. I'm not going to get out of this one yet. I'm still in this one. I'm going to see if we get a PR about that acquisition and imagine if it says, oh, you know, during this potential AI hype, BBAI, an AI stock, a known AI stock, is about to complete a merger. I'm not 100% sure. That's just my speculation. But I'm, you know, probably going to end up holding this one at least until early next week to see what happens. If it does run up, I'll be taking profits just like any of these. I'll be willing to take profit on any of these stocks as they run up. But that's what I'm looking at for my swing trading opportunities right now. And let's go ahead and hop right into the trades that I took for today. So if we flip over to the iPad here, BZFD, that was my biggest trade of the day. Of course, that was alerted in the private discord here at 4.06 p.m. p.m. You know, I said I, I took some at 30 cents. I got in this one really quick because if we also go over to the Discord here, we type in BZFD on the search here. You know, we can see in the private Discord that, you know, we got a bot in here that that it's a Nunito bot, uh, Nutino bot. Uh, they alert very quick. You know, there's so many people talking here, so I got to go all the way back here. 4.05 p.m. And we can see... You know, they put out the PR. It was a bot PR spike. If you want these alerts, there's a link in the top and comment. But I posted that, you know, the it was 108.6 million sale. So BuzzFeed, they put out news. They completed a sale of, you know, Complex for an all cash deal of 108.6 million. And in this case, I was willing to instantly buy this on that news because I already knew this ticker. This was a potential company that was going bankrupt. It looks like they're trying to escape bankruptcy. Getting a hundred and you know eight million cash is a big time deal. So the alert there that was good for a fifty percent pop at least there. So that's all I did with this one. I literally saw the news and guys, keep in mind if you just you know see a random at PR and you just jump in, you're probably going to lose your ass because you're going to jump in. It's going to be already spiked up and then it's going to tank. I only really jump in instantly on a PR if it's m just mind-blowing great news, like 106, 108 million cash deal, or like SYRA, $70 billion contract type thing. Then I'll top in. Most of the time, I wait for it to set up properly and try to get a breakout on the play. But you can see here, you know, I jumped in at 30 cents, and, you know, I literally held for this pop-up right here. I might have scaled out a few shares on this pop, right there but then I scaled out most of them right here scaled out some here and I actually got back in a little bit at 40 cents here for an overnight hold and you know I'm probably going to sell this tomorrow if it gaps up I'm selling it if it doesn't gap up I'll sell it you know I'm just holding it for a potential extra profit if this does gap up it closed over 50 cents so it does look good it's it might be a high volume mover tomorrow so look out for it you know, this is not a long-term hold. I'm in it overnight. I'm going to be selling it tomorrow, most likely. SNPX, this one, they dropped a, uh, they pretty much just dropped a patent. This was an end. Oh, man, the mic just fell. Sheesh, I got to get that fixed up. But pardon me on that one. But uh, if we go over to the <laughs> Discord here, we can see that SNPX dropped uh, patent news at 3.57 p.m. here. You can see right there. And literally all I did with this one is I jumped in. These these have been hot lately. Uh, I jumped in and on the patent release. And, you know, I jumped in right around here somewhere and it, it I held into after hours. Then I was selling for profit on this pop right here on this candle right here. I was selling. 
you know, I don't necessarily think, you know, that I'm going to hold this for a 100% move on a patent every single time. So I'm always scaling out profit. I want to, you know, maintain myself as a profitable trader. So I'm always scaling out profit, even if it's a pop like this. And this in case, that was a 25% pop. I'm happy with that. I'll take my $1,300 profit on ticker SMPX. So that's, that's what I did for that trade. Ticker VCIG, same thing here. I got in on the news on this one. Um, they drop news that they had the world's first you know, AI powered post harvest robotic packaging system. So what I saw in this one was the world first and AI powered. And I jumped in on this one. I know I just said most of the time, if you jump in on these PRs, you're probably not gonna, you know, be successful if you buy and hold them. But if you're getting in them and getting right back out, you know, you could potentially have secured like a 46% move there or, you know, a 25% move there. So that's all I did on this one, $1,400 gain, got in on the news, Got right back out when it was starting to pop up. And it was simple as that. I did a little bit of DDI. I was thinking about getting back in on this one for another trade, but they had warrants here at here. Let me let me show you. VCIG on dilution tracker. We go to the dilution. They had warrants at $1.25, meaning they can sell shares at $1.25. They can dilute at $1.25. And it was over $1.25. So I wasn't as confident to get back in on VCIG for a second trade. So I took my money, $1,400 profit, left this one. CNEY here, this was a dumb trade for me. I was literally still in bed when I took this trade. You can see CNEY down there, you know, at a $2,400 loss. Uh, I woke up, you know, around 6.30, I saw this, this it was a Chinese ticker. It was trying to break out of three. I was getting in for the break of three. It double topped here. Um, it was a big mistake. And I took a, this was my first trade of the day, $2,400 loss. It was just a stupid, stupid thing to do. I wasn't even out of bed. I don't know what I was doing. I took a $2,400 loss for a break of three, got in somewhere around here, started breaking out, tanked, had to cut the trade. I'm always cutting out my trades if I take a loss. I'm cutting them out cutting the losers, moving on, going to some winners, making it back. That's what I did today. Ticker IMCC, $1,300. I mean, this was stupid as well. This had no volume. I The only reason I tried to get in this one for a trade is because it, it, it was popping up on my volume scanner a little bit. People were buying it a little bit. And I already knew the chart on this one. I was like, ah, oh, maybe this is time to break out. So I added a little bit, you know, I definitely could have held the shares here instead of taking the loss. Uh, but I just, I wanted to get out of the play, $1,300 loss. I got in right here and then I just sold somewhere in this absolute low volume disaster that I shouldn't have actually took a trade on IMCC. This is what happens when you're trading a low volume play. This had 213K volume, 8.5 million float. That is no volume at all. And at the t time when I was trading it, it probably had even less volume. Um, so yeah, guys, none of these, by the way, none of these day trades are long-term holds. I'm. These are just me reviewing my day trades. And also, none of the stocks I'm talking about in this video are long-term holds. Uh, um, you know, I'm swing trading these for news. And, you know, leading up to the news, I'll be taking profit on the way up on all of these. If they don't work out, I'll cut them for a loss and move on to some tr other potential winners with catalysts coming up because I'm not going to diamond hand a play for, you know, to lose 60, 70, 80, 90% of my position, but these have catalysts. I think they can play out. That's just my opinion. I could always be wrong. NVIDIA, big, big day for ticker NVDA, up 9% in after hours. Let's see what happens tomorrow. It's going to be very interesting, but I will say the all-time high is 746.11. If you see it break 746.11, that's very good news for NVDA. That means it's still strong and it's going to continue higher potentially. So that's it for me. Drop a like on this video if you did enjoy this content. I know my videos have been long lately, but I got to get the information out there. I want to review my trades and I want to go over my swings. That's just what I want to do in these videos. If you guys enjoy it, let me know down below. That's it for me. Peace.